Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. We live in what are bewildering times. With each passing day, there is some change in the news, some unexpected development, another twist. It feels as if we are living in the middle of the plot of a strange science fiction movie. In the midst of it all, we pause and take some time to focus hearts and minds on the worship of Almighty God. One of the comments I've received from the last couple of videos was how comforting it is to see the familiar surroundings, the stained glass windows, the furnishings of our church. Today I've chosen a spot in front of the Annunciation window. Today, the 25th of March, is a pivotal moment in the year. It's exactly three months since Christmas Day and nine months until Christmas Day. Now, that may not be high on your priority list this evening, but it is in the church's calendar, the feast day of the Annunciation of our Lord to the Blessed Virgin Mary, the day we remember Mary's world being turned upside down by the visit of Gabriel with the news that she was to be the mother of God's son, and the, so the beginning of her nine months of pregnancy. I've often reflected on the turmoil she must have faced. The gospel accounts seem so clean, so easy, so simple. As Luke tells us, she responds, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. But behind those simple words of response must have lain deeper agonies as she came to terms with what that change would mean in her life, with a new reality she would have to face. She went with haste, we are told, to her cousin Elizabeth in the hill country. Was she the object of scorn or derision, of rumour or speculation amongst her neighbours and friends? What was, she knew, good news, must have seemed at times a terrible burden for her to bear. Can I suggest to you that as you pray and reflect on your new and strange circumstances, that you reflect on how Mary might have felt following the angelic invitation. Tonight, I want to tell you a heart-wrenching story about a man called Horatio Stafford. He worked for the YMCA and was a Sunday school teacher. He was a very successful Chicago lawyer who had made a significant fortune and invested it all in property. In 1871, the Great Chicago Fire destroyed it all and he faced complete financial ruin. Shortly before this, he had lost his only son. And he tried to pick himself up to rebuild his fortune and he was making some progress when in 1873 a Great Economic Depression hit and for a second time he lost everything. So he decided to pack everything up, to set sail to Britain and to take part in the great evangelistic campaign of Moody and Sankey. But at the very last moment, there was a change of plans. He had to stay in Chicago to deal with a business problem following on from the Great Fire. So he sent his wife and his four daughters ahead of him as they had already planned on the ship. And he intended to follow some weeks later. But while crossing the Atlantic, the ship collided with another boat and sank. All four of his daughters were drowned, but his wife was discovered floating unconscious in the water by a sailor in a rowing boat. And this sailor pulled her to safety, and when she reached Cardiff, she sent a telegram to her husband with just two chilling words, saved alone. He set sail immediately to be with his grieving wife, and as his ship passed the point in the Atlantic where his four daughters had drowned, he sat down and put pen to paper and wrote words which have become a comfort to Christians in many generations. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll. He had lost his only son. He had lost his property, empire, his fortune twice, and now his four daughters. And still he could proclaim with confidence, it is well with my soul. Tonight, we have many fears and anxieties to face. We are surrounded by bad news as we place our hope and trust in God 
May we too sing with confidence, it is well with my soul.
or what can you trust in today? Everything which seemed just a month ago to be so secure has crumbled. We've discovered how vulnerable our businesses and economic life is, how helpless our political leadership is, how medicine is struggling to produce a vaccine, how science seems totally overwhelmed. All the things we took for granted, like the regular routine of the school day, the ability to go to the cinema and to watch sports, all of it has ground to a halt. Every facet of business, economy, education and social interaction has come tumbling down. Even the worst excesses of two world wars did not have such a shattering impact on the nature of society in this country. What is there left that we can place our trust in? The epistle to the Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 19 says, We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. The hope he speaks of is the certainty of God and his promises. All around us the world is shaken, but God remains the same. His word unchanging and his promises sure. We have been brought very quickly to a point where we have nothing left that we can place our trust in, except in God. It shouldn't have taken this to bring us to our senses, but now is the moment to turn again to God. Throughout the Old Testament, the constant story of the children of Israel was that there was a crisis and that they turned to God for help. Gradually life improved and the better things became, the more they forgot their need to depend on God, the more they depended on themselves, on their abilities, power, strength and wealth. And after a time then a crisis would hit again and the circle would turn. Really, we are no different from the children of Israel. We have been living in a promised land, a land of plenty, and we have lost sight of the need of God. We've been living in a world far from God and his word, and suddenly that world has crumbled before our very eyes. Our only firm and secure hope is in God. That verse from Hebrews was the inspiration for another wonderful hymn, and as we listen or sing along, let us reflect on the question, where is our anchor? Is it in God and his word? Or has it been in the wrong places and we find ourselves adrift, lacking hope and security, unsure of what way we should turn next?
Bishop John, our Archbishop elect, yesterday shared a very short meditation which was sent to him by a bishop in India. And it's worth each of us holding these words in our minds and reflecting upon them. No rain has not ended, no wind has not calmed, no night has not turned to day, no pain has not subsided. All things pass. God reigns. There is a great peace in remembering that all things pass, but God still reigns. And so in confidence and trust we come to God in prayer. At times of anxiety and fear, our first instinct is often to intercession, and we can forget to give thanks. As we begin, let us use the familiar words of the Book of Common Prayer, the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. We pray especially for this land. O God, who in days of old didst give to this land the benediction of thy holy church, withdraw not, we pray thee, thy favour from us, but so correct what is amiss and supply what is lacking that we may more and more bring forth fruit to thy honour and glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for health care workers. Lord Jesus Christ, who said, For as much as you do these things to my brothers and sisters, you do them to me. Be near to all those who care for the sick at this time. Give them a sure sense of your presence and a full measure of your spirit of care and love. Guide their hands and keep their hearts as they bring health and healing to all in their care, who you lived and died to save. And keep them, Lord, in perfect peace as they do your will. Amen. All these prayers we unite together in the words our Saviour Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the God of love be with you, support and sustain you, strengthen and uphold you, enfold you in his warm embrace and keep you safe beneath his almighty wings. And may Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit bless, preserve and keep you and all those whom you love and whom you have prayed for this night and always. Amen.